three, just uh, three questions. One is to follow up on the infections in children. Uh, some countries have seen um, a link between Kawasaki disease and uh, type 1 diabetes um, in children that have been infected with COVID-19. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, you've seen this uh, in Malaysia. I think the, the Kawasaki disease, uh, uh, as far as we are concerned, that uh, it happens in children, but uh, we have not seen in our patient. Uh, more importantly, is that it because of the, uh, the rashes as well as the vasculitis. And uh, as I said before, this virus, there are th three uh, main complications. One is the lung, uh, affecting the, pneumonia, the lung and then causing pneumonia, etc. Second, the virus attacks the endothelial of the vessel. So causing vasculitis and even shedding uh, inflammation in the vessel, endothelial region. And that caused stasis and then the surge of uh, platelets and etc. Then clots formation. So the clots formation has been reported. We have seen in our post-mortem cases as well, especially the young. Uh, you know, in the 30s and, uh, and 40s, and uh, you do the post-mortem, the clots formation. We have seen uh, clots formation in the iliac artery, in the renal artery, and uh, even in the mesenteric artery, causing ischemic colitis, renal failure, in, in, and so, uh, uh, as well as a heart attack if it's in, a, in the heart, as well as stroke if it's in the brain. So there's a lot of complication with regards to the clots. And then third is actually the immune response. The immune response, as far as you are concerned, that you know, when you start to have a virus infection, you get the IgM first and then you will follow by the IgG. Usually IgG will last a long time, but we realise that after eight weeks, there's a decrease in the IgG. From our study in one of the groups uh, infected uh, in the school that uh, we uh, looked into the serology test, the IgG, we only found about 20% after three months. So from reports from China and other countries, only 17% of IgG reported after three months, which means that they can get a reinfection again, the possibility of reinfection because you do not have the antibody uh, to, uh, to fight the virus. And also there's a lot of question with regards to the vaccine, but uh, we do not know the response of the vaccine until we have the data to substantiate uh, the facts. So these are some of the findings that we have. and. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, you know we'll continue to do serology tests in terms of the antibody response uh, in our patient that's been infected. So we are following uh, them closely every uh, three months, and then we'll see uh, some of them volunteer for the blood for us to uh, study. Then, in terms of convalescent plasma, yes, uh, again, I, if I'm not mistaken, the last is. 12 or 13 patients already uh, stepped forward to donate their blood to us and then uh, in, and we managed to have uh, 22 packs of uh, uh, convalescent plasma ready but we have not used it. Uh, most important is that uh, concentration of the, plas uh, the plasma uh, whereby the antibody that we are looking into it. So if we can actually uh, uh, accumulate uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the convalescent plasma, if we have ill patient, for example, then a response of antibody is not there and we can use this convalescent plasma. Uh, so far, we have not uh, used it because uh, our patient in ICU is not many. Uh, recently, only we only have uh, uh, six patients. Uh, before that, I think the last couple of weeks, our patient was very low. Uh, so, um, hopefully, we do not, do not need to uh, look into the usage of this convalescent plasma. But more in top, importantly, this is also under our monitoring and uh, uh, just like what we used to do, uh, hydrochloroquine and uh, lopinavir, ketonavir and all that, we are using off-label. So we hope that there's more evidence in literature for us uh, to use convalescent plasma or not to use convalescent plasma.